fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada, the jewel of the desert, a city of never ending. How powered by the miraculous Boobadam Casino. You've made your last delivery, kid. Sorry you got twisted up in this scene. From where you're kneeling must seem like an 18 karat run of bad luck. Truth is, the game was rigged from the start. Welcome back to Retro Rebound. In today's video, we are going back to Fallout New Vegas. Of course we're doing this. It's Fallout week. Season one of Fallout is dropping on Amazon Prime. So I happen to have myself in, as always really, a Fallout mood. And since Fallout the TV show is set on the West Coast, I want to go over to the best coast and play the best game on the West Coast, and that's Fallout New Vegas. Now, that's not the only Fallout content we're producing this week in the Retro family. Locke has his own Fallout retrospective on the way this weekend. We're also going to be doing a Season 1 review of Fallout over on Retro Rewind, our brand new TV, movie, and anime retrospective and review channel. So be sure to check those out. Link in the description down below. Ladies and gentlemen, I have so much to say from story to memories to... I'm here because of Fallout. Out, frankly to the DLC modding complete in box experience so much to get into the following video is brought to you by Storyverse. Storyverse is a new entertainment app for immersive animated stories in a new groundbreaking read-watching format, bringing together writers and animators from around the world to create exclusive and unique content. This new format is an evolution of animated storytelling introduced via comic books and graphic novels, offering enthusiasts of those hobbies a new experience. For me, this app intrigued me because of its focus on mature and edgy content. Man, call me dark-hearted, okay? But I'm a sucker for those those kinds of narratives and often avoid the cozier, cheerful nature some stories present. You're not wrong to enjoy it, but Story of Verse's focus on that made it an easy way to get into the stories featuring these complex themes. One such example is Lucky Find. It's a sci-fi story about a future ravaged by chaos with a cybernetically enhanced woman discovering a haunted ancient artifact. It just speaks to my preferences. There's also a wide variety of animation styles and techniques, as you'll see 2D, 3D, hand-drawn, anime, and more, which breeds an artisan community that's wholly unique. So what are you waiting for? A whole new world of stories presented in a thrilling, unique fashion is waiting for you for free. Whether you're on iPhone or Android, you can head to the App Store to check out Storyverse or use my link in the description below. Thanks again to Storyverse for sponsoring today's video. Starting off with just the memories baked into this game. Now, every lad or laddess has to make a choice in their life. Are you a Fallout 3 lover? Or are you a New Vegas lover? It's that fork in the road we all find ourselves in at one point in our lifetimes. Now, I have always gone this way to Fallout 3. I love the tone, the atmosphere, the setting, the music, the characters, the story, the side quests. I love that game with every piece of my soul it's so good it hurts in my opinion now a lot of people take that as a disrespect to fallout new vegas what you don't appreciate peak role playing to me i think fallout 3 has enough role playing options with everything else it does so expertly well that i'm willing to sacrifice the lack of level of choice that new vegas has for everything additional that i think fallout 3 does compared to New Vegas. But it really wasn't until 2014 that I came to love Fallout New Vegas. And it wasn't until after Fallout 4 had come out that I come to understand just how important Fallout New Vegas is and what it had managed to accomplish. I mentioned it took me until 2014 to love this game. Like many others out there, when I played Fallout New Vegas after I finished all of Fallout 3's DLC in the Game of the Year edition, I found myself disenfranchised with New Vegas. This is more of the same. I don't like this setting. It feels particularly empty. And that came from, I would say, a lack of knowledge because a lot of this game was inspired by the classic Fallout games in Fallout 1 and 2. In fact, you can find the Highwayman from Fallout 2 right there in Fallout New Vegas. There are so many clear homages paid to the original Fallout games, and that's because much of the original Fallout staff that helped make Fallout what it is today had inherited Fallout again through Obsidian Entertainment making Fallout New Vegas. So it was a really interesting full circle moment to be working on this franchise when it was at its biggest at that point in time. Fallout was originally pretty niche 
and Interplay was about to go out of business when they were working on it, hence why they went down the road of Fallout Tactics and they made the Brother to Steel top-down beat-em-up game. But here you found them at the top of the mountain and boy, did they capitalize. But at the time, I didn't appreciate it. Like many others, I called it Fallout 3 2.0, Fallout 3 DLC. I still played the base game. I still played all the DLC when it came out, but I never had that love, that adoration. It all came down to the world space and the exploration. I have a video over on my Mr. Matty Plays channel documenting when I fell in love with New Vegas, and it was in 2014 where I played hardcore mode, and I talked about how that really changed the game for me. You see, when I was exploring New Vegas, my problem was, and I always go to this location because it's my favorite example, and it's perfect, Raul's Shack. You go into Raul's Shack, and in there you find a bedroll, some food, maybe a magazine, a workbench, and I remember playing the game and going, why is this here? This is so worthless. Like this is a waste of a location and New Vegas is full of places that just have that kind of loot. And I'm looking for the sick weapons that define Fallout, the sick armor, the characters, the interactions, the quest lines, where is all of that? And it wasn't until I played Fallout New Vegas in hardcore mode, a mode might I add that's unique to Fallout New Vegas, where it pretty much amps up all of the survival mechanics in the game. So you have to eat, sleep, and drink to stay alive. You also have to account for ammo weight, weapon weight, all that stuff that really makes it more of a survival game before survival games were really popular. Anyway, nonetheless, then you go to Raul's Shack in Fallout New Vegas on hardcore mode and you go, oh my God, this is, this is exactly what I needed. Oh my God, there's a bed, there's food. And that's when I understood the intricate design of Fallout New Vegas and came to love it. Every location did have value, did have purpose. They weren't just trying to meet a location quota. It was smart design accounting for different types of play styles, which is why anytime I fire up New Vegas now, I typically go and play in hardcore mode because I think it fills out the world and makes every ounce of exploration far more meaningful. But as I mentioned earlier, briefly, I would not be here without Fallout. I personally started doing YouTube when I was in sixth grade, so what, 10, 11? I've done YouTube for over half of my life. Those were like skits when I was much younger. It wasn't until I was in high school that I started to find my footing in talking about games, and that was with Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. I did rare weapon and armor guides, and it wasn't until after that came out and I found myself a bit lost and I thought about quitting and just going off to school and forgetting my whole YouTube journey that... I discovered people actually want Fallout content. And so I covered a lot of Fallout 4 leading up to its release. And I say all that because that's at my core no matter what, right? Like I always come back to Fallout. I, we've done a massive Fallout retrospective here. We're doing one now. We're doing another celebration this weekend. Our first TV review is gonna be about the Fallout TV show, which I'm so excited about over on Retro Rewind. Like this series is my spirit animal. I love it so much. So yes, I know it's a lot of exposition, but I hope you understand just how much this series means to me. Let's talk about the core game a bit more. So Fallout New Vegas, you start off in Good Springs. This is a bit uninspiring for some who came from Fallout 3, Exited Vault 101, you're greeted by the entire open world. For me, I like New Vegas' uninspiring step out moment simply because it matches the entire tone of the world. There is no elegance here. There isn't any bright spot or oasis here. In fact, the place with the most population is the most full of crime. You get to the strip, you go, oh my God, People, I'm safe, only to be harassed like right outside the strip gates, duped and tricked every step of the way. It's where most of the gangs reside. There's just so much crime every step of the way. It truly is Sin City, which by the way, is what Fallout New Vegas was originally supposed to be called, Fallout Sin City. Admittedly, this game was a journey for me. And coming to appreciate it was a number of things. It wasn't just hardcore mode, it was playing Fallout 1 and 2 understanding those classics, what they meant to Fallout fans and what they mean to me now, and then seeing that captured in a 3D area in a really strange full circle moment for Obsidian Entertainment and its talent. But I think more than anything, New Vegas is defined by its factions. Fallout is always about the factions. I think it's what drives people to these games, whether it's the Brotherhood of Steel, the Enclave, you think about the NCR, the Legion, you think about all these top factions of Fallout and then sub-factions beneath them and groups of people you meet. And I think that's what drives the product because it's about the people who have adjusted to a certain way of life where the United States of America has been completely nuked to shit. And in Fallout New Vegas, with its very open-ended approach, what I appreciate so much about it is 
there's so much choice every step of the way that you can create pitfalls for yourself in the story. Like if you start working with the NCR on the side and gaining fame with them and your reputation goes up with them, by the way, reputation system, extremely under discussed in gaming. I think it's phenomenal in New Vegas. As that goes up, you know what? Legion might circle around and start hunting you down saying, hey, we don't like what you're doing with the NCR. You better stop acting out. Or when you start making crime and the NCR doesn't like it, that option just disappears in the main story for you. And I say all of that because as I play more and more open world RPGs, I would say The Witcher 3, and I'm not even like a big Witcher 3 fan, but I can respect what it accomplished in its scale and its scope and its choice level. I don't think any game other than The Witcher 3 had ever come close to accomplishing what New Vegas did. And I say that because I'm stunned that New Vegas just isn't the template for open world games. You look at so many popular open world RPGs nowadays. Let's take Cyberpunk 2077, for example. I love this game, might I add. One of my favorite RPGs of last generation. I still love it to this day, and I loved it since its launch day. So this is not me slandering it, but it's clear that the touchstone for that, at least originally, was hey, GTA looks good. And GTA has become the open world touchstone for so many developers. And I never understood that because there's a lack of organic interaction and character development in these worlds, which I think you get really well with a Fallout New Vegas. And I look at its choice structure, its open world, its exploration. I think the only thing you could do better in it is its gunplay. And it blows my mind that that's not the blueprint that people look at and say, okay, we wanna make an open world RPG. Let's look at New Vegas. It blows my mind that it's like, no, we want to make an open world RPG. Let's look at how they designed the map in, oh yeah, Grand Theft Auto. Ranting aside, Fallout New Vegas just has some of the best characters that you can meet. Each of them full of such personality. I'm weird. I really like Lily. Like I get a kick out of her as a, a Nightkin, you know, this mutation of the super mutants and, and her dialogue is just so funny when you find her in uh, Jacobstown. I, I love that whole quest line, especially just finding snow in New Vegas. It's this what kind of moment? I remember as, uh, when I was in, I think it was in high school when I first played that. And that was just this moment of like, oh my God, this world is so big. And this is, this is actually one of the highlights for me at a time where I didn't really enjoy the game much. Of course, crawling through vaults is always a highlight in a Fallout game. And Fallout New Vegas in particular has some really wild vaults. My favorite one is the Plant Life Vault. I, I think it's in the 20s. I'm maybe misremembering. But anyway, this one is just got some messed up creatures. It's super dense. And as you crawl through and you read every terminal, every log, it's just a, a thing of beauty, piecing together the mystery of what the experiment was in this vault. And of course, the inevitable, how it went wrong. I talked a bit about the main story earlier. I think one of my biggest complaints with New Vegas still to this day is that how do you make the same mistake that Fallout 3 did? Fallout 3, people were so upset that the game ended that they had to make DLC to let the story continue on. So you could just keep exploring the open world. And New Vegas, it blows my mind that I always gotta wait to finish the main story until I've done everything ahead of that. And I get it because when you look at the main story for New Vegas and the implications it's supposed to have afterwards on the wasteland, like it's, it's definitely a big deal. Like you're not doing a whatever thing, but same thing with Project Parity and Fallout 3 and they found a way to continue it. So I just wish with New Vegas and all the DLC it got that they managed to let the story continue afterwards so that you could do what I like to do, which is like sometimes go through the main story and then hit all the other side quests afterwards. Speaking of side quests, I mean, I talked about the Jacobstown one. I really like that. There's so many locations that have their own quests attached to them. Like there's this one... NCR location full of glowing ghouls um, that just got hit particularly hard by the nukes and there's a story attached to that which then sends you on a hunt to go kill the legion afterwards. Come fly with me is definitely my favorite side quest in all of New Vegas. Just this wild trying to launch someone out of a spaceship side quest that ends in the most hilarious manner of all time. Like I, I love this game so much really like it's just the gift that keeps on giving and because of all the choices you can make and the permutations and the content there it's a game that you just keep discovering new stuff for obviously there's much more to go over let's do a complete box experience and then talk about the dlc all right of course we have the classic complete in box experience here a fallout new vegas it's a vanilla state which no one talks about anymore because everyone's modding this game but also i brought with me a most heinous sight the ugliest casing you've ever seen. Indeed, it's the Xbox One and Xbox 360 hybrid casing. 
I hate this. Actually, one video that was super cathartic for me, which uh, was Scott the Waz. He made a whole video dedicated to like game cases, talking about like Xbox in particular. I agree. This is awful. This is a crime against humanity. We can't do this anymore. And what's a bigger crime is you even almost got someone like me. I remember seeing this in like Walmart and thinking, oh, Fallout New Vegas on the Xbox One. Nice. And I'm thinking like they ported it. Maybe they remastered it. And it's just the greatest hits disc here for 360, which works, right? It's backwards compatible. You throw the disc in, it works. It's fair. It's all fair play here. But I think it's a little bit deceptive of Xbox and it's also ugly. And you know what I'll say is that I love the Series X casing with the little blade here that kind of labels what series system it's available for. Um, I really like that. But anyway, this is the ultimate edition here with all the DLC. What we're looking at though, mostly with all the fun slips and everything on the inside is actually this PS3 copy. Both these came through the GameStop roulette as you'll see on the back, we have the GameStop stickers. Let's take a look at the back of the box here for Fallout 3 on PS3, where it says, Welcome to Vegas, New Vegas. As you battle your way across the heat-blasted Mojave wastelands to the neon-drenched uh, Vegas... Welcome to Vegas, New Vegas. As you battle your way across the heat-blasted Mojave wastelands to the neon-drenched Vegas Strip, you'll be introduced to a colorful cast of characters, factions, special weapons, mutated creatures, and much more. Choose sides in the upcoming War or Declare Winner Takes All in this follow-up to the 2008 Game of the Year Fallout 3. Now, I just gotta say on a side note here, talking about the Strip, when you first reached that Strip in 2010, <laughs> it did not hit right. It, the, visually, it was lacking. It, heaven forbid you got there during the daytime, you know? It was an awful sight, frankly. And, and even without... And especially without mods, it's an even worse site. I remember getting there and it was the most underwhelming feeling going, this is the strip. It's literally like two maps worth. I thought it was going to be huge, way more epic. That was a disappointing part of the game to me personally. As you get into the nook and crannies of all the different factions you meet there, it's much better. But uh, at least at nighttime, I think it's passable. But during the daytime arriving there in my first playthrough, I was a little underwhelmed by the strip to say the least. We also have here on the bottom, feel the heat. In New Vegas, experience the great Southwest as could only be imagined in Fallout. Up the ante, new features, weapons, factions, and foes await you in Sin City. And let it ride in a huge open world you can explore, choose sides, or go it alone. Peacemaker or hard case, house rules, or the wild card. It's all how you play the game. And uh, shout out to everyone who does the Yes Man ending. We love that. All right, so we have a manual here. We also have a DLC slip for the classic pack. We'll talk about DLC afterwards, but this just comes with the armored Vault 13 suit, the Vault 13 canteen, a weathered 10 millimeter pistol, and five stim packs. A little bit of a callback to the original Fallout game there. So this is just a little day one DLC bonus. What we'll be taking a look at here is the manual, which indeed they did a phenomenal job with this one. It's like kind of a, a weathered notebook, if you will. Like you're gonna see like all the kind of stains throughout. Uh, you have, of course, the colored screenshot. So we love to see that as they break down all the stats you that are visible on screen, the Pip-Boy 3000, of course, an iconic piece uh, from Fallout, the special stats, stuff that if you've played Fallout 3, you're mostly familiar with what they're showing here, the data menu where all the maps and quests lie. Uh, I think I, to, to all of the shit that I give Fallout 76, I will say that they improved the Pip-Boy experience a lot with how they organize things like some sub files and whatnot in in the pit boy originally were just a little too cluttered they talk about hardcore mode here uh, which they recommend on your second playthrough at the start of the game as well as here in the manual combat they break down a bit vats of course iconic part of fallout i love how they do it in fallout 3 in new vegas the companions uh, this is a big part of fallout new vegas and really connects you to every important faction in the world um, continuing on here, they talk about crime and punishment. So they talk about the things you can do here, theft, trespassing. Those are minor crimes where major crimes are assault and murder, which obviously is going to get all the NPCs on your back. Dialogue, they're breaking down bartering. There's so many systems to this game. It's absurd. Gambling, this was unique to New Vegas. This is why the strip was the hot spot because you could play blackjack, you could play slot machines, you could play roulette, and they had all the rules there and there were trophies attached to it. Maybe one day we'll do a video dedicated to getting the platinum because I have the Fallout 3 platinum. They have Caravan, which 
I actually dedicated a whole video in like the 2020s to making a guide on that. So you build a deck and all these cards have value. I don't think it's as confusing as people make it out to be. I enjoy Caravan quite a bit, but I'm not going to act like they explained it the best, but I thought it was totally fine. And then here we're at the Eula, nothing fun. And that is the end of Fallout New Vegas' manual, as well as the complete inbox experience. What I want to talk about when I think about New Vegas DLC is... For those of you who are like me and love a Bethesda Game Studio style experience, we ate so good, it makes me sick to my stomach to think about because we probably will never see an era like that again. You get Fallout 3 in 2008, then all of 2009 you get its DLC. In 2010, you get New Vegas, and then all throughout the rest of 2010 into 2011, you get New Vegas DLC. And then as the New Vegas DLC ends, you get Skyrim. Then you get all of Skyrim's DLC. What, for those of you who love BGS games, what a stretch. Absolutely one of my favorite, if not my favorite time ever to be a gamer because I just kept getting fed the best of the best from my favorite developer and my favorite style of game. New Vegas's DLC makes me feel a particular type of nostalgia because as I said, a lot of this was played when I wasn't in love with the game, but just as someone who loved this style of game, I couldn't help but play anything new that came out in that form. So first DLC was Honest Hearts featuring Joshua Graham. I remember the reviews for this one were kind of uninspiring, but again, I think overlooking some of the strengths of New Vegas, which was the writing quality here. This was one of the things that Josh Sawyer in particular could really hang his hat on. He's become widely known across the games industry, but in particular, he's commended heavily for his work in New Vegas, and Joshua Graham was one of those big moments for him. You know, this guy has one of the most iconic cutscenes in Fallout ever, where he's loading the gun, he's got this head wrap, He's talking about being the burn man. Like this dude is just such a well-written character. You hang on every word that comes out of this dude's mouth. After this was one of the most hated Fallout DLC ever, Dead Money. It also happens to be potentially my favorite DLC. I love Dead Money so much I have made individual videos defending Dead Money because I think that it's a really cool concept in a series that always says, here, go to the new area and explore it, do a couple of quests, come on home, and that's it. To say, you know what, we're taking your weapons away, we're giving you a new set of choices, you can't leave with everything unless you glitch the game. That run into the casino at the end, into the vault at the end, where you're taking all this loot home with you, and the, again, the choices you can make, the atmosphere that's there, how messed up the lore is here. I mean, the Sierra Madre Casino just, what a great DLC. Like, I think it's overlooked, and I encourage you, if you're one of those people who hate this DLC, please give it a second chance. It absolutely deserves it. There's also Old World Blues. This is probably the golden child for many people, right? Because it gives you more of what New Vegas did well, except it's hilarious. Can we talk about that scene with foot penises? That is one of the greatest lines ever dropped in Fallout history, just right here in this little DLC. Just wacky, charismatic characters everywhere. Some of the best loot ever, the L-A-E-R, I think it's called. Just that weapon is cracked. You get that also, I think that weapon that's like a, a dog brain, but it, it, it barks when you reload. It's, there's just, wild weapons here and and that's what i love about fallout so much one of my building blocks also on youtube was rare weapon and armor guides you can find me doing it for skyrim you can find me doing it for fallout 4 and i always hunted them personally which is why i started making videos on them i love finding them in fallout 3 i love finding them in oblivion like it's one of my favorite things about a Bethesda Game Studios game is it's a low-key loot game without being a loot game. And that's why Starfield can drive me up a wall at times and Fallout 4 and its legendary weapon system can drive me up a wall sometimes because I'm like, you guys don't get it anymore. You don't get why we love that loot anymore and it bugs me to no end. But before I go off on a tangent, New Vegas did get it. Overall Blues got it the most. So many unique pieces of loot, the Proton Axe for God's sakes, like just... I could go on. There's a, a laundry list of equipment options in Fallout New Vegas' Old World Blues DLC that that just top of the line gear for any RPG. And then the last DLC. This is the one that makes me feel that weird sense of nostalgia. And that is Lonesome Road. I distinctly remember, and I don't think the videos are available anymore because I didn't want to be a Let's Play YouTuber, so stupidly I deleted them. But I remember staying home from school when Lonesome Road came out. 
why was that? I wanted to do a Let's Play for it. This was at the time where I just wanted to do video games on YouTube and I wanted to break through and make something of it. So I stayed home from school. I played Lonesome Road. I uploaded the whole Let's Play series. And to my knowledge for like a very small channel at the time, it did pretty well, which is why, again, I, I wish I didn't delete it. It's just a core memory of mine. I feel no so nostalgic for that time. But of course, you're chasing down Ulysses, who's got the most deep voice in all of Fallout. And while this isn't as open and explorable as, say, what Fallout New Vegas' Old World Blues brought to the table, it, to me, is up there in DLC with kind of what Burial at Sea Part 2 does for Bioshock Infinite and the original Bioshock, where there is this full circle feeling where you start to find out, like, why was I shot in the head in the first place? I never really thought to ask this question, but maybe we find out some of that now. Like, why was I the courier at this point in time? And this kind of rivalry, this relationship you have, this strange interaction you have with Ulysses is one of the best that I think all of Fallout has to offer. So each DLC to me in New Vegas offers something distinct, right? You get Joshua Graham, a unique survival experience, classic open world exploration with some of the best weapons, and then this unique narrative-driven relationship here uh, with a great choice at the end on where the nuke goes, which by the way has huge ramifications for your ending so it not only adds a great narrative punch but then an incredible level of choice at the end that dramatically impacts your playthrough and the base map of new vegas it is a beautiful send-off from obsidian when it comes to what could potentially be their last time working on fallout there have been rumors that they're going to work on fallout again and i pray that is absolutely true We'll see in due time. But Fallout New Vegas is an incredible experience still to this day. I love every single bit of this game like I do pretty much any Fallout game that doesn't have the name 76 in it. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I leave it to you. How do you feel about Fallout New Vegas? Do you share the same love and admiration? What are some of your favorite moments? This is a game we could have sat down for an hour to talk about every nook and cranny of it but hopefully this will suffice and so that'll be it ladies and gentlemen and i will catch you on the next retro rebound peace out <laughs>